Welcome to our time of scripture reading and devotional reflection for Saturday, July the 9th, 2022. I'm Pastor Brian J. Monroe, and this is coming to you from my office in Kitimat First Baptist Church in beautiful Kitimat, British Columbia. And we are I'm here to read three passages of scripture, <coughs> pardon me, as defined by the Revised Common Lectionary for this time of the year in this year of the three-year cycle. And I want to read for you so that you can spend time just listening to the Word of God. I'm not here to explain it or exposit it. Um, I pray that this whets your appetite and that you will go in and do your own study afterwards and consider the truths that you find in the Word of God. There are lots of ways for you to get answers to your questions. The most important and the easiest would be simply to find a Bible preaching, teaching, believing church close to you and begin speaking with those disciples about what the Word of God means. We begin with Psalm 82, a psalm of Asaph. There is the word Salah in this, in this psalm, so I will pause for 10 seconds when I encounter that word because that word is a command to pause. God has taken his place in the divine council. In the midst of the gods, he holds judgment. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Give justice to the weak and the fatherless. Maintain the right of the afflicted and the destitute. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. They have neither knowledge nor understanding. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. I said, you are gods, sons of the Most High, all of you. Nevertheless, like men, you shall die and fall like any prince. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for you shall inherit all the nations. Amos chapter 12, sorry, Amos chapter 2, verse 12 to chapter 3, verse 8. But you made the Nazarites drink wine and commanded the prophets, saying, You shall not prophesy. <coughs> Behold, I will press you down in your place as a cart full of sheaves presses down. Flight shall perish from the swift, and the strong shall not retain his strength, nor shall the mighty save his life. He who handles the bow shall not stand, and he who is swift of foot shall not save himself, nor shall he who rides the horse save his life. And he who is stout of heart among the mighty shall flee away naked in that day, declares the Lord. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O people of Israel, against the whole family that I brought up out of the land of Egypt. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Do two walk together unless they have agreed to meet? Does a lion roar in the forest when he has no prey? Does a young lion cry out from his den if he has taken nothing? Does a bird fall in a snare on the earth when there is no trap for it? Does a snare spring up from the ground when it has taken nothing? Is a trumpet blown in a city and the people are not afraid? Does disaster come to a city unless the Lord has done it? For the Lord God does nothing without revealing his secret to his servants, the prophets. The lion has roared, who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken, who can but prophesy? John chapter 3 verses 16 to 21. Jesus is speaking. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, 
but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people loved the darkness rather than the light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. This is your word, Almighty Father God. May you be praised always for the generous and gracious provision of it to us. And may you grant us through the power of the Holy Spirit the ability to hear your word, to understand your word, to have it move into our minds, into our hearts, into our very souls, and therein work what is good and pleasing to you. To your glory we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. <clears throat> and now our reading from Oswald Chambers, My Utmost for His Highest, for July the 9th, entitled, The Great Probing. Joshua said to the people, You are not able to serve the Lord. He is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your rebellion and your sins. Joshua 24, verse, verse 19. Have you the slightest reliance on anything other than God? Is there a remnant of reliance left on any natural virtue, any set of circumstances? Are you relying on yourself in any particular in this new proposition with God, which God has put before you? That is what the probing means. It is quite true to say, I cannot live a holy life, but you can decide to let Jesus Christ make you holy. You cannot serve the Lord God, is what Joshua says, but you can put yourself in the place where God's almighty power will work through you. Are you sufficiently right with God to expect him to manifest his wonderful life in you? No. But we will serve the Lord. It is not an impulse, but a deliberate commitment. You say, but God can never have called me to this. I am too unworthy. It can't mean me. It does mean you. And the weaker and feebler you are, the better. The one who has something to trust in is the last one to come anywhere near saying, I will serve the Lord. We say, if I really could believe, the point is, if I really will believe. No wonder Jesus Christ lays such emphasis on the sin of unbelief, and he did not, and he did not many, and he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. This is talking about him at home in Capernaum, where they didn't believe in him, and so he didn't do any miracles. If we really believe that God, what, that God meant what he said, what should we be like? Dare I really let God be to me all, the thing, all that he says he will be? That is worth pondering. Almighty Father God, may you be to us all things you say you are. May we find that you reveal yourself to us every day to be more and more and more who you claim to be in scripture. And may we find those claims breathtaking and wonderful and transformative as you continue to work in us to bring us closer and closer into the same shape that your son is, Jesus Christ, so that we become more and more congruent with his witness in our witness, so that we can be called sons and daughters of the Most High God. We pray this to your great glory, Almighty Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior, our Redeemer, our soon-returning King. Amen. 
Well, I thank you, friends, for spending some time listening to scripture being read and prayers of reflection and devotionals. And until we're able to be together again to do more of the same in our discipleship walk, I bid you, in the name of Jesus Christ, Shalom.